is Izzy and welcome to the vlog. Welcome back if you have been here before but this is the first vlog of 2023. I will be doing weekly vlogs that may change during like vlogtober or vlogmas but that is a long way out but if you are new to my channel I will introduce myself so I am Izzy that is not my real name but back like 10 years ago when I started YouTube I wasn't allowed to use my real name because parents were paranoid of the internet back then and so yeah, my real name is Elizabeth, but you can call me anything. I don't really care. I'm not picky. I personally don't call people by their name and I don't really like when people call me by my name because I'm like, I know you're talking to me. And then for me, when I'm talking to somebody, I'm like, it's only two people in the conversation. Why do we have to say each other's names? <laughs> but honestly, y'all can say whatever because I don't really care. Like it's nothing that I'll get triggered by. <laughs> but this is a book channel. So I post all about books, TBRs, hauls, um, faster predictions and vlogs. So I post two videos a week and then I have an ASMR channel. So technically you are getting three videos a week out of me, but only two are on this channel and the cats open in the door. My house isn't haunted, but I will be talking about my reading plans later. Y'all saw I went to Barnes and Noble and I literally only bought one book because I want to buy the books that were nominated for the Booker Prize last year. And the one book that Barnes and Noble had that was nominated for the Booker Prize is the one that I ordered on Amazon last month and is sitting in my living room. So I'm like, we love that. And then I want to buy Cleopatra and Frankenstein because I've seen it on so many people's best books of 2022. And I saw it there last month, but didn't buy it because last in December I was focusing on fantasy and all of that. So I didn't buy it then. And I should have because now it wasn't at Barnes & Noble this go around. So I only ended up buying one book. I saw a lot of books I would love to buy, but, or love to read, but that's not, that, that I'm not ready to buy yet. So I bought Lessons by Ian McEwen, I think is the name. Is he Irish? Like, I feel like he's Irish, but it didn't say on the synopsis. I just think it's fascinating how so many writers come from Ireland because it's such a small place and everything. But we will begin into reading today. I will get to talking about my TBR and all of that. I haven't read anything yet today. My goal is to read 107 books this year and I am honestly so stressed right now. I had to do so much today. Go to the grocery store, go to the bookstore because the first of the month it's only so stressful. And then I feel like I haven't. I had chips literally for breakfast. I've had nothing to drink today and not a real meal. So I'm hangry it is hot because i was wearing a wool coat but i will check in with y'all probably around six which is in a little less than two hours to get into reading for 2023 this isn't going to be where i usually vlog but i've just i need a new chair basically for my desk because mine has a ginormous hole in it but i wanted to talk about my reading plans for the year and show you other books that i got um from amazon this month i think Yep, they're all from Amazon. But yeah, today has just not been a great day for me. It's like nothing exactly bad has happened. It's just I've been really irritated. I'm like, I don't know why I've been irritated. Mercury in retrograde? <laughs> no. But it's just, I feel like everyone is trying to get on my last nerve today. And I'm like, please, can y'all stop? <laughs> but I know it's me. It's not the other people. So... It's just frustrating and my eyelashes just kind of freaked out like the Katy Perry thing. <laughs> no. But we're, we, so 2023 is not starting out strong, but nothing can be as bad as 2021. Like I feel like that was such a bad year and 2022 did get better, but 2020 was the best year out of the whole decade for me so far. And people are like, how like 2020 sucked. It didn't suck for me. All the other years people died and it was like, I know people died in 2020, but yeah, it was not a fun time. My cat is being such a creep. He is literally just sitting in the corner behind my totes with my phone charger. <laughs> yep, there he is. But I am rambling because as I said, I am in a mood and I just want to talk to vent and all of that. But the books that I've hauled, I will tell you why. I don't know if I'm doing a haul at the end of the month. I don't remember, but I got... We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. And this was an award, it won an award for fiction and was a finalist for the Man Booker Prize. I don't know what Man Booker, I know what Booker is, but not man. But I loved Booth by Karen Joy Fowler. It was one of my favorite books of the year for 2022, which I will be doing a video on that in the coming weeks. So I wanted to check out her other books and this one's a lot shorter, so that's a bit more pleasant. Then I am wanting to read 
all the books uh, are nominated for the Booker Prize. So this is Glory by Noviolet Bulawayo. So that one. And lastly, this is on my mood reading TBR this month, and that is The Poised Crown by Marty Struin. This is the third book in the Accursed King series, and it is translated from French. It's kind of classic because it was first published in the 1950s. So let's go into my little reading journal. I got an owl crate one this year because last year I couldn't. They were sold out, so I'm so happy that I was able to get one. And I have to go through here. So here are my plans for literally the days and what I'm going to be reading on what days, but I did want to go through other plans. So my mood reading um, this month came from a random number generator, which I did a video on that last month talking about how I'm doing that. And then my TBR books will be reviewed on my blog. So the books that are on my TBR, I'm going to have reviews on my blog and notes will be taken in my Animal Crossing notebook. So I'm not going to be annotating in the books themselves, but just writing in a notebook. And so I can haul, I can haul as many books as I read in December, which was nine. So I've gotten four books today and then I have three books coming from book of the month. So I can only buy two more books this month, but I am, so all this I did pay for with my own money. Now I'm thinking of like book of the month. I think one of those books came for free, um, because if, if somebody uses your code, all that kind of thing. And then I was given a book today that I had given my grandma for Christmas and she's like, this is a five out of five. Personally, I think it's gonna be a three star. And she's like, you need to read it. So that one I'm not counting as, because I didn't pay for it, even though I originally kind of did pay for it, but it was a gift. So I'm not counting those. I'm just counting the books that I am paying for myself. Then I have my book wish list. So this isn't necessarily books I'm going to buy this month, but these are books that I am anticipating this month. And then we have my monthly TBR, which is Sapiens, The War of Jokes, and I don't know the rest. Um, Mother Knows Best, Electra Years, Up in the Star, and Path of Deceit, which we will begin to my TBR on Monday, which is tomorrow. And then we do have my weekly planner here, which is the page that we need to be on. But today we're just going to be doing mood reading. Let me get those books and tell you about them. I have three books right here to talk about with y'all. So I do an ebook every single month. And I, so this is what I read when I get into bed and all of that. And this month, I, I do like reading sci-fi in January. I don't know, the, the vibes just feel right to me. So it's going to be Dune by Frank Herbert, classic sci-fi. I know a ton of people love this book and I have not seen the movie yet because I've been wanting to read the book before I see the movie. So we have Dune here for my ebook. And then you guys voted that I read a short story or a poem every day. So Today that didn't happen because Sundays I am just very busy in the mornings and wake up earlier than usual so I just didn't have the time. But on my like weekdays when I do have time and there are fireworks going off outside the window I was like what are all those red lights? But Florida is going to be the short story collection that I read this month so every morning I will just be reading a short story in here. So this is a the stories in this collection span characters, towns, decades, even centuries. But Florida, its landscape, climate, history, instead of mind becomes its gravitational center, an energy, a mood as much as a place of residence. Startling, precise, and affecting Florida is a magnificent achievement. And lastly, so my mood for you, the book that I'm going to be starting in about 10 minutes here, 12 minutes to be exact, is The Lost Roses by Martha Hall Kelly. I love the Lilac Girls, which is kind of the first book in that series. You don't have to read, and again, sorry if you hear fireworks, you don't have to read all the books in the series in order. You can pick and choose because technically this would take place before the Lilac Girls, but I'm going in order of publication. This is from the turbulent streets of St. Petersburg, an aristocratic countryside estate, to the avenues of Paris, where a society, where a society fell on Russian immigrant lives in, lives to the mansions of Long Island, the lives of Eliza, Sophia, and Varenka will intersect in profound ways. In her newest powerful tale, told through female German perspectives, Martha Hall Kelly celebrates the unbreakable bonds of women's friendship, especially during the darkest days of history. So this has taken place during the First World War, when the first book took place during the Second World War. So I cannot wait to pick that up in 12 minutes now, but those are my mood readings for at least this week. Vlog sitting right here. Oh my gosh, I can. That is super nice. So my bed is not made, but... I read 26%, which was 116 pages and 10 chapters, and it's feeling like a three, but 
We haven't got to war yet. Well, we kind of have, but not way too much into it. But it's, okay, I need a list of the side characters and like what their role is because I'm getting them all confused. With the main characters, like the POVs, we have Sophia is my favorite, um, even if we weren't, we didn't have her in the first book. I had the first book right up there, that's what I'm looking at. But yeah, I definitely liked the first book a lot more. I felt like it was more entertaining. Um, with both books, all these people's stories are connected, but with that one, I feel like they were just all way more different than each other when this is like, okay, we had two people of high society, we have one peasant, it's not that different, and they all are kind of like in the same places, in a sense, not totally, but I don't know, it's just not doing it for me like the first book did, but I'm still going to continue because this is one of my favorite time periods and there's not a ton of good historical fiction about it. And this is a good book, it's just not a great book. But I read 26% as I said, and I am using Storygraph now. So if you guys would like to add me on Storygraph, I will link it if you can link it. I honestly know nothing about it. I'm gonna have to ask my friend about it because she's the one who finally convinced me to get it. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So please help. And then my Goodreads is, is it linked down below? I don't know, but if it's not in the description box, I will put it in the pinned comment. And also I will leave a link to my review of the first book as well, which I think it's on my blog but if it's not on my blog I'll just do my Goodreads one because check me out self promo but I'm going to go get a bath now and here I was reading Penny on me because she is scared of the fireworks because it is New Year's and then Fred was but he left but yeah I had all these animals on me and I was just so happy happy place right there but yeah, as I said I'm going to go get my bath now Oh, and I totally forgot, I don't do my ebook on Sundays because Sundays is typically the day that TV shows release on. This month I don't think I have any shows releasing. So I, I, I do spend Sunday watching TV shows and currently watching Call the Midwife on Netflix. But, so I'm not gonna be picking up Dune today, but I will be picking it up tomorrow. So stay tuned for tomorrow in a few seconds. First update of Monday. So as y'all saw, I got into Florida by Lauren Groff. I read the first short story in there and well, let me hold the book up. <laughs> I really liked the writing and I felt like it painted a perfect picture of the South that took place in North Florida. I'm not exactly sure which city, but in my head I was picturing Jacksonville, but I don't know what all is actually considered North Florida, but I really, really liked the writing and as I said, it paints a perfect picture. And to let y'all know, in previous years past, I haven't given star ratings or reviews to short story collections, essay collections, poetry collections, but this year I do think I am ready to start giving reviews and I already am kind of making a plan in my mind of how I plan to do my star ratings for anthologies and that kind of thing. So. I just want to give you all that brief update on Florida since I did read this right time I woke up. Just something that I am going to be doing this year. And then we are starting my first TBR book of the month. And so this means one that I will be reviewing, like doing a full length, like five paragraph, 500 word review on. And that is Sapiens by A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari, which I did see a bad article, not like, bad as in he's committed crimes bad, but bad as a lot of people say a lot of this stuff can, or a lot of his writing can be conflicting or maybe not necessarily correct. And that, that is something with science. I'm not sure when this book was published, but science is something that is always evolving and something new discoveries are always being made. So it can be, and everybody has like their own theories in science, especially in Human, the history of humankind. There are so many different theories you can go about. So it's not something where I'm like, I'm not gonna give him a chance. And to let y'all know, I have read the graphic novel of this, which I highly recommend. I really like how this is um, 
that there are multiple formats to make it more accessible to wider audiences because I know a lot of people who would be very who would find this very taunting to pick up a big nonfiction book especially a science one and so reading a graphic novel is easier for them it breaks it down easier and if you are a visual person it has pictures but this does also have pictures throughout um, as you can see the hieroglyphics right there I don't really think you can see it that well because the is very bright today but I am going to get into this and I, I am going to be doing the audiobook just because for nonfiction, I like listening to the audiobook because it's usually the author who is narrating and I'm pretty sure he is um, narrating this and is he Israeli? I think. Oh I don't know but he lectures at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem so it should be interesting to hear a different accent but I I'm going to be picking this up. I just need to do the math to see how many chapters I want to read today because I would like to finish this book in three days and I will be starting the audiobook at 1.5 speed and going all the way up to 2.5. I usually alternate each chapter of my speed gradually going up and then once I hit 2.5 gradually going down. So I just want to give you all, all that on how I do my audiobooks. Again I'm going to be taking notes in my notebook and not actually annotating the in the physical book and these pages would be kind of hard to write on. I can't they're glossy pages kind of I guess like they're they don't feel like normal paper I, I'm not sure what kind of material this book uses but I'm going to be starting it in about six minutes now update time I'm actually gonna lower that a little bit my bed is made so at least it does look nice today but I just got done reading Sapiens for the day so I do want to tell y'all all the notes I left I got to 23% by Goodreads and then on Storycraft it says I'm at 28% which is a big difference but this is my first time logging an audiobook in a story graph so it might be doing something wrong not exactly sure but I do want to tell y'all my thoughts and that was 119 pages I don't know if I said that which was six chapters now my thoughts so there is still so much we don't know about ourselves as humans which is so fascinating like you think you know everything about yourself to like even just you but you don't and then if you think of the grand scheme of things how much we don't know it's like mind-blowing and then there is not not a lot different from the graphic novel so I think you could read the graphic novel and still get the whole memo that you're going to get in this book. This book is obviously more dense than the graphic novel but you still get all the same information so I think that's really awesome it makes it more accessible to more audiences and I know some people can read I read the graphic novel pretty quickly more quickly than I'm going to read the actual book so it's very accessible. There are slight, some slight differences between the audiobook and the physical book like what in the audio it said like 3.9 million and then in the book it will say 4 million which again this is very technical so it's not a huge difference or sometimes the books will go and list something like it listed all the kinds of bears but on, rather on the audiobook it was just like there are four species of bears in the world. So there's that. And then my next note is how everything impacts everything. It goes back to if we think about Homo erectus, Homo sapiens back in, I don't know why I said Homo erectus, it's Homo sapiens in Africa who would, they would see a fig tree or I don't know what this fig, a, a sweet fruit tree and they'd be like, oh, we need to eat all this before the monkeys come and eat it all. So. That is why now we binge on sweets because it's in our instincts, which I find it's so fascinating how everything, as little as eating all the fruits on a tree so monkeys don't get it, contributes to why we have a sweet tooth today and want to go binge eating tons of like cookies. Crazy. And I think that said a quote, even today scholars in this field claim our brains and minds are adapted to a life of hunting and gathering. And then chapter five talked a lot about um, farming because it went the agricultural revolution. That's what it went to after the cognitive revolution. And just animal cruelty has been happening in the meat field forever. Um, they, I think it was in Guinea, 
would gouge the eyes of pigs and cut their snouts so they cannot see or smell so they wouldn't want to wander away from home like terrible and it just made me feel really guilty about eating meat even though I'm literally about to go eat pig I know I'm terrible and then my last point is how everything is a man-made concept like the for example that they listed the US dollar human rights the USA in general these are all ideas believed by billions of people but they're not really real it's all imaginary like man made that like i only say like people complain about inflation and all i'm like well if all of us in the billions got rid of money we wouldn't have that issue or yeah i just i think of that all the time but obviously it's something you have to convince billions of people so it's pretty much impossible or maybe not because like i don't know it's it makes your mind think a lot but that is all for Sapiens for the day. We will be getting into the Lost Roses in about an hour and 15 minutes, and I will see y'all then. Starting a little late because Penny didn't tell me it was past nine. So rude. I was looking at old photo albums, literally ancient pictures. <laughs> Some are, there's one that looks like the 1920s, but to this book. We are starting on page 116 chapter 11. So I am starting a little bit late but I would like to get maybe like two chapters read today. It's only three minutes late and I'm like it's of the world. Oh my gosh. So I want to, what page did I say I was starting on? 116. Why did I only read 112 pages yesterday? That's like not right but I don't know what I'm doing most of the time when it has to do with numbers. So I'm going to read this and then get back to y'all. Final update of the night. So I read 24 pages, which was actually three chapters because one chapter was like three pages and I was like, I can do that. And I'm not only gonna read two chapters if it's only like 12 pages. That would be too short for me. So we only had our Russian characters today, Sofia and Varenka, and we got to 31%, which is chapter 14. This chap or this book reads really young in my opinion. It's not listed as YA, so Varenka makes sense because she's like 16. The other two have children and are, I'm gonna say, who, who's the other lady? Eliza. I'm gonna say she's late 20s, early 30s because she has like a pre-tween daughter. And then, sorry, Fred back there. And then, Sophia, I don't know how old she is. She, this was her first child to live. That wasn't a miscarriage. So she's obviously an adult and it, they just read really young. I don't know why. I don't know if maybe that's just being brought up in nobility maybe calls that, I don't know. But this book is not very dark. I mean, there are some scenes, but the if you want a dark, dense to like a very going into it, World War One book, I recommend Fall of Giants by Ken Follett, which I talk about all the time. Absolutely love that book. Highly recommend. I feel like her first book was a lot more dark than this one. And I'm not saying I need darkness in a book, but this is very just flat. It's not going deep. I feel like as her other book did, but there's my update for the night. I will be starting Dune tonight, I want to read 5%, so I don't know how many pages that is, but I will be reading Dune. on the brightness, but I feel like that looks kind of dark, so let me know if you prefer what it was for the past two days, Sunday and Monday, or for Tuesday, Wednesday. Let me know which lighting you guys prefer. So I, I can't tell if you're kind of crooked or not. I can't tell. This is so difficult. Literally my least favorite part is like seeing in the camera straight or not. It's mainly on my DSLR. I, I hate it. I can never tell. <laughs> so I'm like, just deal with it. And nobody's ever commented, so it must be fine. But it is Tuesday, January 3rd at 1.17 p.m. Let's talk about Dune. I read that last night. I read 44 pages, I think it was. And so we have Paul, Timothy Chalamet, who is the son of this woman who is, I'm gonna, because I, I don't know how to pronounce the words yet, but who is like a witch. And so everybody who is in that kind of witch culture, everyone who's a witch, only has daughters, but she had a son. 
and I think they can choose which gender kid they can have because it made it seem like why did you give him a son like like she could help it and basically so there's this prophecy kind of thing that there will be a son I guess we can say wizard um out of the whole magic system so he's gonna test it to see if he is if he has these powers and then we have some other guy was it Vlad was that literally his name I don't remember but who's like our evil villain who is he's like we need to put a stop to this we can't let this prophecy come true so that's just my understanding of the five percent that I read of Dune again like <laughs> but yeah, you can very obviously see how Star Wars was heavily, heavily, heavily inspired by this. Then I read Florida this morning. I read 29 pages in there and got the 16%. And oh my gosh, that short story was so good. It's taken place um, during kind of the 1930s is when it starts, I would say, because it's like pre-World War II. And we have our character, Jude, who... His dad is studying like snakes and reptiles in Central Florida and at this time Central Florida wasn't really populated because it was all like swamp and jungle and his but his mother is really like against it. She is hates the snakes and um, alligators and all that kind of thing so his parents have a very toxic relationship so it just goes about how he deals with that and how he grows up as a person of what kind of impact a parent a the, the relationship of your parents can have on you and I really enjoyed it. The writing is so good and I'm so glad I have another Lauren Graf or Groff book. And then we will begin into Sapiens at 2.30 but I did get some book mail today as you can see my little blue box is right here but that's not going to be the one we open first. So this is a new release that I have here. Where did it go through? Nashville. I'm going to say MGE's Montgomery and Charlotte. I'm sorry Penny. She hates my unpackaged things. So I don't know if today is the release date for this book or not, which we should look at the new releases because books do release on Tuesdays, but we'll look at that in a moment. So this is One Brilliant Flame by Joy Castro. And we do have a Florida setting in this book. So Key West 1886, the booming cigar industry makes, this most makes it the most prosperous city in Florida as a rebel base for the anti-colonial insurgency in Cuba. It's also a tinderbox for six young, young friends with ambitious dreams. So this is kind of Cuban against the backdrop of the great fire of Cuba. So don't know anything about when brilliant flame explores the luminous fates of con consuming passion and encroaching peril in the face of insurrection, sacrifice, and indistinguishable hope. Um, I did vlog when I went to Key West, so totally recommend checking that out. It's one of my favorite places that I've visited. I, I just had a really fun time there. And yeah, this is the first book I think this year that I've got that's published in 2023. And it was by Lake Union Publishing, which is that independent? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look. And then we do have my blue box here, my book of the month. Let's get into it. I did get three books this month because I knew it would be cheaper getting them through book of the month rather than getting them at Target or Barnes & Noble. And also I will leave a link down below in the pinned comment if you guys would like to get a free book with your order, your first order of a book of the month. I'm not sponsored by them. Everybody gets this code. But if they want to sponsor me book of the month, please feel free. So you've got great taste. So as you can see, this was my choice out of the books, and that is Queen of Thieves, There Can Only Be One by BZ Marsh. This is an electrifying historical adventure about a ring of bold and resourceful female thieves in post-war World War II London. And it's just about a female gang in London, and I am really fascinated by the post-war era, and so I saw a book on it, I grabbed it because I've been having the hardest time trying to find post-war books that are set in England. And then this is one that I wanted last month, but I didn't get, but it takes place in Florida once again. And it's The Light Pirate by Lily Brooks Dalton. They've had it at Target, but it's cheaper to get it through Book of the Month than to get it through Target. So this is a story of survival and resilience spanning one woman's lifetime as she navigates the uncertainty, brutality, and arresting beauty of a rapidly changing world. So this is dystopian 
and we know I love dystopian fiction. And then lastly, we have Rules of Civility by Amor Tull. So I read The Lincoln Highway last month and I gave it a two star, but I loved the writing. And I know I, a lot of people who love his other two books, Rules of Civility and A Gentleman in Moscow, didn't like The Lincoln Highway. So I'm wondering if I will like the other two books. So still giving him a go. So this is on the last night of 1937, 25 year old Katie Content is a second rate Greenwich Village jazz bar, is in a that with her boarding house roommate stretching $3 as far as it will go when Tinker Gray, a handsome baker with royal blue eyes and a tempered smell, happens to sit at the neighboring table. This chance encounter and its startling consequences propel Katie on a year-long journey from a Wall Street secretarial pool towards the upper echelons of New York society and the executive suites of Condé Nast, rarefied environs where she will have little to rely upon other than embracing wit and her own brand of cool nerve. So those are the books I got from the month and then it says girls just wanna have books and then that's my bookmark from book of the month this month but I will jump back in when we get into reading sapiens and we've been talking about Florida and look at this shirt St. Augustine Florida not even intentional. I totally forgot to tell y'all the books releasing today so we have End Time of Our History by Suzanne Pari. I can't tell my own handwriting that comes out today and then One Brilliant Flame that I got by Joy Castro comes out today. So those are the two books that I'm anticipating anyway that do release today on the 3rd of January 2023. I just had a snack and now it's time to get into Sapiens for the day. We're going to be starting on page 119 and I would like to get to page 237. So about 120 pages I want to read today. Hopefully it's doable because I'm nervous. Like I, I took the break where, and I didn't read for about two to three days last week because I knew I couldn't finish a book in that time and I didn't want to start a book in 2022 and finish it in 2023. So this is getting back into the swing of things. It's nerve wracking. So it was 119 that we are starting on. And I will see y'all when I'm done reading that for the day. All right, this lighting doesn't look too great for nighttime, but I don't want to be editing the, the lighting like every clip because that would just be excessive. And honestly, I don't want to be wasting my time doing that. So y'all are just gonna have to deal with it, sorry. But I am done reading Sapiens for the day. I read 118 pages, so one page less than yesterday. This book did get pretty roughed up because I would rather the book get bitten than me, so. Yeah, my dog eats books. Hopefully it makes her smarter. <laughs> but let's talk about my thoughts. So those last three chapters I just read were about basically what runs the world. Money, empires, and religion. Every issue in this world stems from those three things, right? But let, let's just talk about my points. So one that I read earlier is that there's always been a hierarchy. And there's only going to be one. There's only been a, ca a caste system by class, race, um, gender, more so sex, but that. So there's only been that. And it's an interesting point is how no one knows why patriarchies are more dominant. It goes into talking about, so if we focus on what was the known world at the time, so Asia and Europe. Um, in Africa. Well, I think it was more so talking, um, like it's that, okay, we're just gonna use those because I don't remember exactly how, and I don't know how to word it. So that those were all patriarchies. So the Europeans go to the Americas and most of the Native American cultures were patriarchies. So it had to stem further back before the great migrations of humans. Why? But nobody has a solid theory on why patriarchies are more dominant in the world. Um, but obviously we are progressing more and more out of that. But why was that? Why was it? Why was it like that? I mean, obviously there are a few exceptions, but for the vast majority, most societies are patriarchal. 
then my next point is um as i said there was oh, well hold on before we get to that we had one on money and we know i kind of talked about money yesterday of how it's a man-made concept and i literally don't understand why like it stresses me out thinking about it. Yeah, I think it just causes so many problems. And then the Empire set really didn't do anything for me, just talking about how empires were formed and that kind of thing. And then religion, which was very fascinating. I only just find learning about religion to be fascinating. So it, it talked about monotheistic religions, polytheistic religions, and how a lot of society is based on religion. And um, going back to the hierarchy, a lot of hierarchies were based in religion and how religion has really what our society is founded on and it go it even taught how a lot of religions are good versus evil and why it was something that i was even thinking about today like why do bad things happen to good people and why do good things happen to bad people that kind of thing so it was like saying what the creator is and how no religion has ever had the creator be an evil very fascinating there um i've talked about my own religious beliefs before that i do believe there is somebody did make all of this and that i do believe in a god but i have my own relationship with that being and i don't strictly say i follow one set of religion but I'm closest to Christianity but yeah I don't like I have my own thing and I think that's important for people to have but they talked a lot about Buddhism which I don't know much about like I literally don't know anybody who practices that I think that's one of the like the mainstream religions of the world where I don't know anybody who's in that so I want to, to know if there are any like unbiased books on that that you guys would recommend I'm obviously gonna do my own research as well but if you guys have any recommendations, let me know in the comments. So we should be finishing up this book tomorrow. It's going. It's um, only like 100 pages that I have left because a lot of this is bibliography and all that. And obviously, I don't need to read the bibliography. But I will come back at 9 and talk about Lost Roses with you guys. It is almost 9 o'clock, so almost time for lost roses but i did just watch some interesting tv that i'm going to recommend basically pbs has been going off for me the past few weeks because everything i watch i've watched has been on there but i watched this actually on tv by accident because i was watching jeopardy and i did very well and then um it was something I'm, like discovering your roots it was julia roberts and edward something I don't remember because I didn't know who he was, but Uncovering Your Family Tree, and we know um, somebody who's super fascinated by that, so I always love seeing other people's family trees, and I would love to go on a show like that, but obviously I am not that famous <laughs> to go on something like that, but I would love to see if the research that I have is actually correct, and they were uncovering like very fascinating stories of um, these people's ancestors, so I found that very interesting. I had seen bits and pieces on YouTube before I watched one on Boris Johnson because I feel like his ancestry is very fascinating because it's not really what you would expect by looking at him. And yeah, and I, I've watched it for a few other people. The Genie Vlogger, I think is his YouTube name. He has done videos reacting to this show, so I have seen that before. But in two minutes, I will begin into The Lost Roses. The I only said the, there's no the. So we're gonna be at Eliza's perspective, so our American perspective, chapter 14, starting on page 140. That's a nice number to start at. Let me bring down in my little notebook here what page I am starting on, 140. And actually, one of those releases that came out today, the Iranian American one, is actually Target's book club pick of the month. So they do have it in stock at Target, so I'm definitely going to buy it tomorrow. Therefore, I will only be able to buy one more book this month. Don't know what it's going to be, but we've already hit that limit. Because two of the books I've got were not books that I got with my own money. They were one gifted to me, and the other with book of the month, I get a free book. So I have, I am allowed to get two more books this month which is very exciting and kind of nerve-wracking because i'm like what am i gonna get 
but my battery is dying, so I'm gonna check in with y'all later. Hey guys, it's Monday, January 9th, 1.35 p.m. And I have not vlogged in forever, which is very unlike me. Basically, on Wednesday at like four in the morning, I woke up with a headache, feeling sick, threw up two times, and then went on with my day, like went back to sleep, went on with the day, and was fine. Then, next day, when, like Thursday, I, or was it Wednesday still? I don't know. I think it was Wednesday. I threw up during the day. This is all, this was like a week ago, so it's kind of confusing. And I ended up throwing up in total, counting the two times before, like 15 times. That might be an overestimate, not sure. <laughs> and so yeah, there is a stomach bug going around. I have seen tons of posts on Facebook. Like if we combine like all the comments, it's over 50 comments of people who have this in my city. So something is obviously going on. Um, and I was one of the unlucky people to get sick and it was not fun. And I hate being sick, um, obviously. And my skin is all like broken out. I have pimples because I haven't been able to wash it. And then very dry because I had like a cold rug. I never had a fever. My temperature was only perfect but I was just throwing up and um oh there was a fly but and then I just I felt warm like I felt warm but if you actually did my temperature my skin wasn't like warm it was normal so I had a wet rag and it dried out my skin pretty bad so definitely gonna be getting back on my skincare routine today but I've read books I've finished books um, currently reading books so we're going to be getting into Mother Knows Best which this is a thriller. This is kind of genre bending again because I think it kind of mixes sci-fi into it but not like alien kind of sci-fi. Our story here is we have two characters Ethan who is the father and I cannot Claire. Claire is the mother. Um, so they have a son named Colton who passes away from a mitochondrial disease, meaning it passed down through the mother. And she doesn't want to have kids through herself again because she doesn't want to pass on a terrible disease to have a child perish at a very young age. So they go and look at IVF, which is what, you know, most people do when they have that issue or they go and adopt, but she thought IVF was the best choice for their family. And they find a doctor who is doing experiments of having three DNAs mixed together to make a child. Rachel Berry, right? <laughs> no. But so they can take the DNA of, in this case, two women. Um, so the baby will still grow in an egg that is from Claire. But from Abby, who is a scientist at the lab, they take that might some of her DNA to mix it so the child doesn't have the same um, illness or doesn't pass down that same gene. So they basically take that gene out, put another one in. I'm, I'm not a scientist, so that's my guess. And it's, so she feels like, now she feels like she has a claim on that child too, because it's just as much her child as it is Claire's. So again, this is another book dealing with the morals of science, which is something that I just find very fascinating because it is something that has always been questioned and, has only as people I've never known if they've gone too far and I personally ooh, controversial topic with this kind of thing I don't think there's anything wrong with genetically engineering um kids in this instance when it's an illness because I wouldn't want to pass down like I'm not having kids because I don't want to pass down illnesses I have myself mental physical whatever um I don't want to have children for that but if there was a chance to genetically engineer to get rid of genes and make sure that your kid lives the best possible life, I do think that is something that should be considered. But I never really thought of how would they do that? Where would they get that gene from? So it's kind of, I guess it's kind of like surrogacy where they can sign over saying like that's fine or like sperm donors where like if they don't find out till they're like 18 or until they seek contact. Yeah, you really have to think it over and that's not what this vlog is about, but I'm going to begin into Mother Knows Best, which is that one, and I'm going to be reading it for about the next hour and a half now. We are done reading Mother Knows Best for the day, and I think I'm loving it. <laughs> I really didn't expect that because with thrillers just lately, let's say the past six months, I haven't 
really done well with. I haven't really found one that I actually love or really enjoy one higher than a three star, but I do think this is gonna be a four star. I am actually really enjoying it. So maybe I just need that science element thrown in. I just love jeans, DNA, that kind of thing. Speaking of that, there is something I do wanna talk about in here. So the daughter has like 49.9% of her mother's DNA and th the people would like freak out they're like you're supposed to have exactly 50% so I don't know if you have to have at least 50% DNA as the parent you share like in the book logic um, I'm gonna go look at mine because I'm fascinated now so if you do 23andMe which in the book it's like a um, like knock off 23andMe basically and I am signed into the wrong account that is not mine I have my family's all linked if y'all are like why am I on somebody else's account okay so this isn't mine but we'll do it through those they are where you used to be able to see what percent you share with somebody I want to show y'all how much percent you share with family members because I don't know if the book has taken like creative liberties. So yeah, okay, you click parental inheritance. Oh no, your parent has to take it. Okay, hold on one moment. Okay, we are on my profile now because as I told y'all, they're all linked because like old people, I knew they wouldn't know how to work this website because <laughs> I can barely do it. So. If we go to, you can go to your connections to see um, the people you're related to. You can go to your inheritance. So if you have at least one parent take the test, you can see what percent like European, African, those are my two. So European and African um, DNA that you get from each person or each parent. And then you have DNA painting, which shows the chromosomes themselves and I know I'm totally not getting to what I was looking for because I am having a hard time finding it because I don't think 23andMe's app is that accessible. I do think they could do better. They used to have where you could compare your DNA to somebody else's but I'm not finding that so but I think it was over like 50% for me. So I'm just saying, if you read this book and you get freaked out by it not being exactly 50%, do know that that is fine. You're not a cyborg or something like that. So, but okay, back to why I'm liking the book. So the characters, we do, one of our point of views is an unreliable narrator, which is super fascinating. And I don't always like, because I like to have everything just put out, laid out in front of me, exactly how it is, the facts, logic, but I am liking this atmosphere that's kind of irrelevant for the story. The writing, I do really vibe with the writing. The plot is extremely fascinating of again, including DNA, genes, biology, I just find that fascinating. And yeah, so I am really enjoying it. And I wasn't expecting to in all honesty because I just haven't had a good run with thrillers, but I'm really liking it. So if you know any other books that are like this that include like science, like actual real science, not like aliens and horror kind of science, which I do think aliens and a lot of things in horror are real, but that's besides the point. But like, you know, science labs, that kind of science, putting that in a different genre than sci-fi, let me know because I'm really enjoying this and want to know other books like that. I'm obviously going to have to check out to see if um, Kira Peckoff has other books because I am enjoying the writing as well. So I would like to see what else she's come out with, but I am going to go make a pizza now. And oh yeah, we don't have water. Once again, I know in my last vlog, we did not have water. So they were putting fiber optic or whatever in the ground and hit the water line, water lane, water line. Yeah, water line. So several thousand people <laughs> don't have water again, which is kind of bad. It's very bad. And I brushed my teeth not knowing and washed my hands. I did not know there was a boil. <laughs> I'm very so I don't like die or anything. I don't think I will, but 
yeah, that was kind of awkward. So luckily we do have all this water from last time since it was only last week when we didn't have water. So we can just use that same water to um, again, brush your teeth with and that kind of thing, flush toilets. But yeah, water, it's an essential. And I'm reading Dune and we know Dune, water is like a huge thing there. Like they get the dew off the leaves. So it's so important. Yeah, so, and I'm still reading Florida. It's just Mondays are very busy for me and I read earlier than usual. So I'm gonna be reading Florida tonight rather than during the day because I just, on Mondays, I do not have enough time to do anything, but I really need to go make my dinner now. I got tomorrow's video edited, which for y'all is in the past. It wasn't really tomorrow. So let's see what I'm going to be reading tonight. So I'm still reading Lost Roses and I just stepped on the wet dog bed. It was gross because Delilah chews on her dog bed, but this is Lilac Roses. I know my hands, they're, they're gross. <laughs> so we are starting on chapter 46 with Varenka and 1919 on page 361. So this one is kind of flopping if I'm being honest. It is a three star and it's just not as good as the first book in the series. It's not as gripping the characters. I mean, the character work is fine. Like it's not awful. It's just average atmosphere. I, I love this time period. So I have nothing wrong with that. The writing is just very dual. Like we did this and we did that. I did this, I went there, I went there. Then I came back home. Like it's boring writing and then, yeah, so I'm not really intrigued. I, so I guess it mainly falls on the writing of why I'm not liking it as much. I'm just bored with it, but I'm definitely going to be finishing it th this week. I don't know if we'll be in this vlog. Hi, Fred. But we're going to get into reading this right now. We are done with the Lost Roses for the day. It's kind of weird since I'm not in a bath today and then my schedule's kind of just flipped around. And honestly, it's been like that since Thanksgiving. My schedule's not been perfect. But... We read 21 pages in here tonight, so the amount that I usually get read during this reading time. Okay, like earlier in the book, like when I wasn't vlogging, Varenka just like snapped, like not literally, but her character just like turned completely different. Like she went on one date and was like completely different afterwards and I don't understand why. Like it was just kind of weird and I've hated her ever since to be honest. But yeah, there's the Lost Roses and I'm at 85% or somewhere in that ballpark. So let's talk about my other books that I'm going to be picking up today. So next I'm going to be picking up Florida by Lauren Groff. This is going to be a five star because if you don't know, I am writing anthologies now and I am absolutely loving this. The writing is amazing. It's just so amazing. The writing and then when we had this, so it's a short story collection, but you really feel for the characters that you're reading, even if you're only with them for like 20 pages. And I feel like it takes a lot of talent to be able to do that because I read some books that are 400 pages and don't connect with the characters. The Lincoln Highway, perfect example. Huge, massive tome, did not connect with the characters all throughout, but I can read a 15 page story in here and connect with the characters. So I think it takes a lot to do that. And the setting, like Florida, obviously all the books take place, or all the stories take place in Florida. That is the connecting factor here. It's spot on. The author does live in Gainesville, but it's so, it's so vivid for Florida. Like I absolutely, absolutely see it. I, I've talked about before how I love a Texas setting. My two favorite places for settings of books are Texas and Florida, which those are both very chaotic places. They are very big places. They are places with huge populations, but still have a lot of wilderness to them. Just two of my favorite states. They're very fascinating in history as well because they've both been a part of lots of different countries. In quotes, I don't know. I don't want. I don't know what the exact term would be, but love, love, love this. And I am going to be reading Eye Wall. So it sounds kind of hurricane-ish. And starting on page eighty-four, and let's see how long is this one supposed to be? Eighty-four to one hundred one. So. Yeah, I'm gonna be picking that up after I do my skincare routine. I can still do my skincare routine. I just won't be doing the part with water because if I turn on the sink, no water comes out. So we're just gonna be doing retinol, um, cactus mist or cactus water 
and moisturizer and eye cream. And I probably won't be vlogging when I'm reading Dune because I do the ebook, therefore the lights are off. Dune, this, I don't have a lot of thoughts yet. I am about a quarter of the way into it. I think I'm at 23% because there was just a lot last night and I usually don't read on Sundays, read my ebook on Sunday. But the show, I, it's usually a Netflix night for me, but the show I'm watching is like a medical show and that has a lot of blood, vomit, and that kind of thing. And as I've been sick, I just have not wanted to see that stuff because I do not want to risk getting nauseous. And sometimes this show does make me nauseous. Um, and so I read instead of watching. And so I read about half of what I would typically read in a day, which was still like, it, it was a good bit. I don't remember how much exactly, like 40 some pages. But Dune is a long series. And long series is our building process. It is a process you had to trust the process. I talked about in my video that I filmed today. And so I don't have any massive thoughts yet. This, a lot of people were like, Dune's a very dense book. Uh, I don't think it's dense, I wouldn't say. And you can definitely see how this has inspired modern science fiction and just for movies and books and everything, you can definitely see how influential this was. And again, I just don't have full on thoughts yet of what I'm feeling because this is a tome for one and it does take a while for those thoughts to build but I don't dislike it I don't necessarily like it either it's just there and I am okay like I am enjoying my time listening to it like I do think it's an interesting story but I, I'm not gonna say I'm loving it or anything like that yet but those are my last reading updates for the day and tomorrow I'll let you know how many pages I end up reading hi guys and happy Tuesday once again and yeah it's Tuesday I still well I have water but they haven't put out any kind of statement if it is safe to use or not so I am still using like distilled water like from a water bottle that kind of thing to like brush my teeth wash my hands and my dogs drink water from a water bottle because I don't know if it's safe and I obviously don't want to get sick or how my pets get sick and I, I don't know if I should clean or not. I'm like, because sometimes iron and all will get in the water and it can stain your clothes if you wash your clothes or it can stain, you know, stuff. So I don't know if I want to clean. <laughs> with, I, don't, I don't know if I should clean or not because I don't, because then it'll just be a bigger mess and I would just have to clean extra and that would not be fun. I don't think anybody would want to do that. So I have read today, I read a story in Florida, which that one was very out there. It took place in France, but the characters were from Gainesville and Sarasota. So that was very different from the rest of the stories. Still, I think it had a lot about the female experience. A lot of people don't like when people say female, but like, honestly, that's what, like, like, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Like, in that, that kind of. I, I understand where some people will say it offends them, but there's sometimes there's no other word, but that's besides the point. I'm reading Mother Knows Best right now, and I'm trying to finish this today. And then between chapters, I am practicing my um, video for next week because I am doing my videos scripted in 2023. I've talked about that. I think I talked about that in my last vlog that I want to sound more professional in my videos, sound more prepared. But we will be going to get food later. I am going to a restaurant and I'm not gonna get any vegetables. I'm gonna get fruit and um, then just carbs for my sides because I don't know if it was the vegetables last week that got me sick. So I'm just gonna really kind of stick to my own thing in vegetables. Um, ones that I trust for, um, at least so I know, because if it was food poisoning, I don't know if I had food poisoning or stomach virus, but I'm going to say it was a stomach virus just because as I told y'all, I have been seeing posts all over Facebook of people having a stomach virus in my city. So it would just make sense that that's what it was. Or the water has been contaminated and their tests were all wrong and people have been drinking contaminated water. No, I shouldn't joke about stuff like that. But yeah, I, I always, I am thankful that like 
there's some people who, well, Flint, Michigan, for example, who have had bad water for years. And for me, it's not something that I really stress about, um, not having the water, like not having a bath is fine. Like I love baths, but they're not really necessary because I know like some people are really like, oh my gosh. And then I understand like people with babies and all, I cannot imagine. So luckily I am not someone who heavily, heavily relies on water. It's not Dune for me, but I am going to get into reading because I am rambling. Sorry about all the shadows. That's just what the three o'clock hour is like. All right, so I finished. She or not, she has her mother's lap. Sorry, I was. I've been doing the script for next week's video, and it's kind of similar themes like genetics and all. But mother knows best. I finished it four out of five. I loved it, and I'm honestly so shocked by that that I loved it because, as I told y'all earlier, thrillers are, have just been hard for me to get into to enjoy. But let's talk about my thoughts. So the characters, as I said, it's very unreliable <laughs> because I was constantly like, for the whole like first half or probably first like, what is 75% third? I was like, okay, these are the good guys. And then for some of it, I was like, maybe not. And then I'm like, okay, like it was just, constantly changing of oh my gosh who's the good guy because in thrillers you only said the good guys the bad guys that's how it is and as i said how i don't think any of these people are truly evil might have been a little bit wrong i'm not sure like this is very just unreliable narrators and it worked out perfectly um i was never really scared but i was wanting to know what was going to happen Again, I don't think thrillers are necessarily supposed to scare you. I think that's what horrors are meant for. But I was like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? And I was never really creeped out, but I do think some people might be. The writing, I really enjoyed the writing. Like it felt like I was actually hearing a story and it felt like a movie in a way. Like I could very much see this being a movie and I think a movie that would scare me so much more than a book actually would. And the plot was just so fascinating. As I said, it's kind of genre bending, throwing in the science in there of genetics and seeing um, the ethics of science, seeing how far we want to go with experimentation on human life. And we know that's just something I'm incredibly fascinated in. So I did really love this book and do recommend picking it up. And as I was talking about genetics yesterday, I was thinking grandparents, you're, with your grandparents, you're not going to have the exactly 25% DNA. So that's where I was wrong. Um, so you do have 50% exactly of your parents. And then with further back, you are going to, the further back you go in genetics, you will have the decimal. So like point 0.23.9, whatever. Um, yeah, but obviously it depends on the person, your ancestry, your family, all of that fun stuff. But I do need to see what thriller I'm going to pick up next. So we have finished a book in this vlog. I've finished three books this year, but this vlog has been hectic and I finally finished a book. So I'm proud of myself for that. So as I said, I'm gonna go find out what thriller I'm going to read next and then work on my book review. It is almost nine o'clock. So almost time to get into Lost Roses. And we will be starting in here on page. 382 chapter 49 at Eliza's perspective in 1919 and tomorrow we will be starting a new book that I'm not going to go too much into my thoughts right now because I'm just showing y'all what we're starting and that is Electra by Jennifer Saint who is the author of Ariadne. I went ahead and finished Lost Roses so it's a three star. I did like it. The characters just kind of had a snap in the middle or at least one of them and just changed completely um the atmosphere i absolutely loved you can tell that martha hall kelly did her research and i read um the author's note as i always do and it gave me so many suggestions to read to learn about russia in this time period um the writing was where it falls short it was this dual bland blunt writing like it's a surprise there were no German characters by how blunt this was <laughs> and then the plot was yeah the same kind of boring it wasn't as I wasn't as emotionally tied as I was in Lilac Girls the first book but the last book or at least what I think is the last book 
um, I don't know the name of, but it takes place during the American Civil War, so I feel like I could vibe with that one a whole lot because it takes place in America and, you know, so I might vibe with it more than one that takes place mainly in Europe, even though this is one of my favorite time periods, but I still did really enjoy this book. I will be getting into Dune tonight, starting on page 237 in here, and I will be starting a new mood read tomorrow. I'm not going to talk about the details of it, but it is The Plebotomus by Chris Panettiere. I am going to take a bath because I did look up and it did say it is safe to take baths, so and there is a boil water advisor. Just don't drink the water, but like who drinks our bath water? So I'm going to do that and then edit my video, which is this video, after 